Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a recommendation video for parent horror. What I mean is these are horror books that center around the horrific things that can happen to children. So basically a parent's worst nightmare. Throughout this video, I'm going to be mentioning that a lot of these books, of course, are going to appeal most to parents, especially those with children that are of similar ages to the children in the book. However, you certainly do not need to be a parent in order to enjoy these ones. And I do want to preface this video by acknowledging the fact that there are plenty of people that are childless by choice, including a lot of my friends, and I have so much respect for that. Honestly, as a mother myself, there are days where I think, well, what was I thinking? Life was so much simpler before kids. And there are also many people out there that are childless, and not by choice. I myself struggled with infertility for seven years before we had our son. And so I really want to acknowledge that this video is not intended to be exclusive or in any way suggesting that parents are superior to non-parents or anything like that, because I really do not buy into that that parent politics. I do not think that you need to be a mother or father in order to have a whole and complete life. And I don't think that parents are any less or more selfish or selfless than anyone who chooses not to have children or simply does not have children for whatever reason. So I usually don't get into all that politics here, but it's something that's really close to my heart. So I did want to mention it. Otherwise, let's get into the actual books. First, let's start with the book that actually inspired this video topic, and that is Blanky by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a horror novella that follows a couple that have recently lost their infant child due to what is believed to be SIDS. The story is actually told from the father's perspective, which makes the story a little bit more unique. And at the beginning of the story, he is separated from his wife because she just wants nothing to do with him or the house since their child has died. One day he walks into the room where their child used to sleep and finds their blanket in the crib. This seems a bit unusual to him because he was certain that that blanket was actually buried with his child. And now he begins to wonder if somehow there is something more going on. And this book is one that I both want to recommend to the parents of young children and also want to tell you to stay away from it because I read this book when my own son was just a newborn. He had just come home from the NICU. He was a preemie if you weren't aware. And so he was only five pounds when we took him home from the hospital. And I remember bottle feeding him before bed reading this book and it really hit me hard. And I'm not someone who reads with a lot of of emotional attachment to my books. I can read about some really difficult subject matter, some really terrible things and not have it affect me. But holding my tiny baby infant son, reading about a child that has died of SIDS when my own son was in the middle of those risk factors himself was absolutely terrifying. And so putting him to bed after reading that book was probably a terrible idea. So I really found myself very emotionally affected, actually crying, which I never ever do when I read books, especially not horror. And so this is definitely a book that I would recommend to any parent if you are willing to take a chance on a book that is probably going to emotionally destroy you. Now, if you're looking for even more infant horror, I also want to recommend a short story that is found in this collection here called Other Voices, Other Tombs which is edited by John Burrell and Joseph Sullivan. And the story I want to mention is called The Governess, which is written by Anya Alborn. And I believe she wrote this one when her child was just a baby. It follows a woman who decides to invest in a really fancy baby video monitor. And when they get it, strange things start to happen and they get all these glitches. And I really want to recommend this story because for anyone like myself that did actually buy a video monitor as opposed to just an auditory one, Strange things do happen on those video files. And I've had really weird glitches where I'm looking at an image of my son and then he would simply disappear and then reappear because the connection was lost and all of that kind of thing. And those sorts of things happen in this story. So I found it actually to be strangely realistic to glitches that actually do happen. Of course, in this case, there's a question of whether or not there is more going on, if it's more of a haunting. And I definitely would recommend this one to anyone that is dealing with the wonderful and terrible nature of baby video monitors because the creepiness around them is real and I'm glad someone finally wrote a story about them. Next, I want to recommend a novel called Mind a Winter by Laura Kashiki. This follows a woman who is spending Christmas Day with her teenage daughter while her husband is off to get 
our extended family members from the airport. It's a blizzarding day and the mother in the story is transfixed by the fact that she believes that something followed them home from Russia years ago when they went to adopt their daughter from there. Now, while the daughter in the story is a teenager, a lot of the story involves flashbacks to the years when they were going to Russia and finding their daughter and the adoption process. So this one I would definitely recommend to anyone who is in the adoption process or thinking about it or has gone through it themselves. And I can't really speak to the horror elements surrounding the family relationship because it is a spoiler. You really don't find out what is happening until the end, but it is one of those devastating books that when you actually realize where the story is going and what they mean by something follow them home from Russia and all of that, like, oh, it's such a gut punch. So again, one I'd recommend, particularly to those that are in some way involved in the adoption process. But honestly, even though I did not adopt my son, I definitely think that this is a book that will appeal to anyone who is you know, interested in that and definitely has a lot of all ages appeal. Again, you don't need to be a parent in order to read this book and think, oh my goodness, how could this happen? So hopefully I've intrigued you enough to pick it up for yourself. It's a really unique one and definitely one of my favorites. Next, I wanna recommend a book called Naomi's Room by Jonathan Acliff. And this is a story of parents that go out shopping with their young daughter and she wanders away and disappears. And it's right in the synopsis, so it's not a spoiler to know that she does not return home. She is found dead and the parents are dealing with the grief. The story is a little bit of a haunting because the story refers to the fact that they start to hear noises in their home, specifically in their daughter Naomi's room, and believe that possibly she has come back in some sort of ghostly way. Now, this is a book I picked up because so many parents told me that it was the scariest book they had ever read. Now, this is one of those books that I read before becoming a parent and I would be curious if I read it now if it would affect me even more but given the synopsis of it the idea of being a parent that is dealing with the aftermath of a murdered child you can tell that this one definitely goes to some dark places and is emotionally devastating so keep that in mind again a tough one to read but again if you want something really scary this might be a good one to check out for yourself next I want to recommend The Changeling by Victor Laval this follows a man named Apollo who is recently married and has a new newborn child. Something terrible happens, his wife commits a terrible act, and then Apollo is sent on a mission to basically find out why his wife did what she did. This is one of those books where you really don't want to give away too much of the plot, and so it's hard to talk about the parent horror aspect in this book without giving that away, but basically the safety of their child is put into question given what she does, and this book has one of the scariest scenes that I have ever read in a horror book and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I read this when my child was about the same age and I remember reading the scene that scared me so much in the middle of the night while I was watching and checking on my son who had woken up and I just found it to be incredibly disturbing so as I was trying to fall back asleep I was reading those pages and my goodness it just brought me to a place of fear because as a parent the idea of losing control and not being able to protect the person you want to is absolutely terrifying. So I really do feel like this is a book that parents will especially connect with. And I also like the fact that it's told from the father's perspective. Along with the horror aspects to it, I do think it's a really interesting take on parenthood in general. A lot of the book, at least the beginning, talks about the challenges of you know, being a parent and trying to be loving and all of the challenges that come when we bring our own baggage into our own parenthood of looking back on our own childhood. And of course, this book also deals with a lot of technology around photographs. And so they are taking pictures of their child and putting it on Facebook and strange things start to happen. And so it kind of deals with the oversharing online. But at its core, this is really a book about parenthood and fatherhood. And it's just one I love 
love so much. Highly recommend. I basically use the excuse to put it into every video I can because I just want to keep convincing all of you to pick it up. Next, I want to talk about Suffer the Children by Craig DeLouis. This is a post-apocalyptic book that is set in a near future where there's some kind of disease that has broken out and caused all the young children to die. However, shortly after, they rise again from the grave. However, in order to stay awake so that they don't fall back into a comatose state, they need to be constantly drinking blood. And this is a book, again, I read before having children, and I do think I would have liked it more had I read it afterwards because I went into it expecting vampire children, but this book instead is much more focused on the horror of being a parent in this situation and the lengths that they're willing to go in order to protect their children, to keep them alive and living. And so the parents are literally bleeding for the sake of their children and just giving their own life for them. And it's very metaphorical and it's definitely one that, again, I think I would have liked a little more had I read After Having Children. Not a personal favorite, but definitely fit it's well into the topic, so I did want to include it here. Finally, I want to recommend another horror novella, and that is Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. This follows a woman whose son, who I believe is in his early 20s, has recently died in a car crash accident, and so every day she goes to visit the place where he died. One day she accidentally bleeds on the site and begins to have visions of her son. She desperately wants to see more of her son and bring him back in any way, so she begins to make larger sacrifices, bleeding and cutting herself in order to bring him back. This book does have content warnings for self-harm, but what I like about it is that it really does capture the obsession that comes with parenthood, and the idea of outliving your son is absolutely horrifying, and just the lengths that people are willing to go for their children, and I really think that this book captures that well. The main character was very likable and relatable, and you just get to see her downward spiral. So not the lightest story on this list, but definitely well worth your time. And and one I would just love to see more people picking up because I think it was just a solid read and yeah, one that definitely needs more attention. So that is it for this video. Let me know of the books I mentioned, which ones are you most interested in trying out for yourself? I realized as I was filming this that these are kind of dark and depressing reads. So maybe this isn't quite the fun video that I thought it would be, but I would still love to hear from all of you. For those of you that are parents or are not, what are your favorite books that involve the horror surrounding parenthood and children. I would love to do another video on this topic if I get enough recommendations and read enough new books. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I read horror, science fiction, fantasy, and thrillers. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, share it around online, and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.